Good morning, Year 5. Today we are doing the big question based on our opening chapters of the London Eye Mystery. Um, but before we do that, we're going to practice ordering the text, um, which is a type of question you will see in a lot of your Puma tests and next year in Year 6. Um, one thing we want to do before you begin this is just to show you how to answer these ordering the text questions properly, because it is very easy to get full marks in these questions so long as you follow these steps. Now, I cannot just base my answer off memory, but what I can remember from the text, I actually need to go and open up the text and see where these events take place. So I have six events here in front of me. Ted eats shreddies seven through 17. Cat and Ted track the limbs capsule. Ted comes back with six envelopes. Dad was hopping around in one sock. The radio program switched back to the news. Now, I have some idea where they are in the text from reading through it. However, I am going to have to underline them and number them. So let's see, Ted and Cat tracked the limbs capsule. I think that is around the opening chapter from what I remember, but I'm going to double check and I'm going to underline it. OK, there we go. Cat and I tracked the limbs capsule as it's made its orbit. So that is possibly the first one. I've underlined it, but I'm not going to do any more yet. So let's see. We have other statements here. Ted eats ready seven through 17. Ted comes back with six envelopes. Dad was hopping around in one sock. The radio program switched back to the news. Now, from what I can remember, they came up in chapter two. So let's have a look. OK. So there's Dad was hopping around in one sock. I found it. The radio program switched back to the news. I'll find that in a minute, but I can see here that I aged ready through seven through 17. OK, so I've done some of this for you. You are going to have to do the rest because it is your due now after all. But I have found three of the statements. OK, I found three of the events in the text and I've underlined them. You need to go back and find the remaining ones and then look at what order they come. Then you can simply write the order in to your due now and get full marks as you would in your tests as well. OK, so that is what you need to do. I've shown you how to do it. You need to find the events, you need to underline them, and then you need to number them into your do now. Go and do that, then pause the video and come back when you're ready to mark. OK, so let's have a look at the answers. So the first one was Ted and Cat, Cat, ugh, I will repeat myself. Cat and Ted tracked Salim's capsule. Tick. The second one was done for you. It started the day the letter from Aunt Gloria arrived. <clears throat> Number three, Dad was hopping around in one sock. Number four, Ted comes back with six envelopes. Number five, Ted eats ready seven through 17. And the last one was the radio program switched back to the news. OK, so there's the ones in order, one to six. If you follow the step success by taking your time to do this do now and underlining the text um, and then putting them in the correct order, you should have got full marks. OK, please do that when it does come to your Puma and sorry, your Pira test, as it is really important to get full marks because it's quite easy to do so if you just take the time. So. Let's have a look at the big question for today. So our big question is, did Kat and Ted make the right decision to let Salim ride the eye alone? OK, you may think it was OK to let him do it or no, it wasn't the right decision in hindsight. OK, after they lost him. But what you do need to do, as you always do in your big question, you need to support your answer with at least two pieces of evidence from the text. Two pieces of evidence. That means a quote. Really, really important to do that. OK, so this is my question. Thinking about Kat and Ted, did they make the right decision to let Celine ride, ride the eye alone? So that is going to be in the back of my mind as I read throughout this text. OK, and I will make any notes and you can make any notes as you need as we go. OK, chapter one. A giant bicycle wheel in the sky. My favourite thing to do in London is to fly the eye. 
on a clear day, you can see for 25 miles in all directions because you're in the largest observation wheel ever built. You were sealed into one of 32 capsules with strangers who were next to you in the queue. And when they close the doors, the sound of the city is cut off. OK, straight away, I can actually make an argument here that they did make the right decision. OK, remember, Salim was actually never on the eye before, as we know from our previous days of reading. So on a clear day, you can see 25 miles all around. OK, that is possibly a yes. Because Salim had never been on the eye before, it was a clear day and they wanted him um, to see London as he was not from London. OK, I could possibly argue that later on. I've not decided yet whether I will or I won't. We'll talk about it later um, when we come to our answer, but I'm just making notes as I go. OK, let's continue. You begin to rise. The capsules are made of glass and steel and are hung from the rim of the wheel. As the wheel turns, the capsules use the force of gravity to stay upright. It takes 32 minutes to go a full circle. From the top of the ride, Cat says London looks like the toy town and the cars on the roads below look like abacus beads, going left and right and stopping and starting. I think London looks like London and the cars like cars, only smaller. The best thing to see from up there is the River Thames. You can see how it loops and curves. But when you're on the ground, you think it is straight. The next best thing to look at is the spokes and metallic causers of the eye itself. You are looking at the only cantilevered structure of its kind on Earth. It is designed, designed to look like a giant bicycle wheel in the sky, supported by a massive A-frame. It is also interesting to watch the capsules on either side of yours. You see strangers looking out, just like you were doing. The capsule that is higher than yours becomes lower than yours, and the capsule that is lower becomes higher. You have to shut your eyes because it makes a strange feeling go up your esophagus. You are glad the movement is smooth and slow. And then your capsule goes lower, and you are sad because you do not want the ride to end. You would like to go around one more time, but it's not allowed. So you get out feeling like an astronaut coming down from space, a little lighter than you were. We took Salim to the eye because he'd never been up before. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, because I could say yes to that as well. We took Salim up to the eye because he'd never been before, okay? And remember, they were only offered one ticket, he'd never been. So possibly that is evidence I could use to say yes, that they should have let him go. A stranger came up to, came up to us in the queue, offering us a free ticket. We took it and gave it to Salim. We shouldn't have done this, but we did. Okay, straight away of evidence for no. Okay, so it could be arguing the opposite way, haven't decided yet. I was going to write a little no here so that... I know that I want to argue that way. He went up on his own at 11.32 on the 24th of May and was due to come down at 12.02 the same day. He turned and waved to Kat and me as he boarded, but you couldn't see his face, just his shadow. They sealed him in with 20 other people whom he didn't know. Okay, again, I think that's a bad idea. Some young boy who's just come from another place in England does not know London. And they put him into a capsule with 20 people he didn't know, never mind knowing the city. Okay, again, not a good idea. So I can refer to that later if I need to. Cat and I tracked Salim's capsule as it made its orbit. When it reached its highest point, we both said now at the same time. And Cat laughed and I joined in. That's how we knew we'd been tracking this right one. We saw the people bunch up as the capsule came back down facing northeast towards the automatic camera for the souvenir photograph. They were just dark bits of jackets, legs, dresses and sleeves. Then the capsule landed. The doors opened and the passengers came out in twos and threes. They walked off in different directions. Their faces were smiling. Their paths probably never crossed again. But Salim wasn't among them. We waited for the next capsule and the next and the one after that. He still didn't appear. Somehow, somewhere, somehow, in the 30 minutes of riding the eye, in his sealed capsule, he had vanished off the face of the earth. This is how having a funny brain that runs on a different operating system from other people's helps me to figure out what had happened. Okay, so that is where you will find your evidence. You will find your evidence in chapter one to answer a big question. Now, however, we are just going to practice reading chapter two as well 
doing a bit of paired reading before we go and look at a model answer. OK, so all your evidence will be in chapter one and that's where we'll, you will need to refer to when you go for your big question. OK, let's just read chapter two together just to keep practicing our fluency, intonation and so on. Chapter two, news of a hurricane. It started the day the letter from Aunt Gloria arrived. Aunt Gloria is my mom's sister. Mom calls her Aunt Glo and Kat calls her Auntie Glo. Dad calls her Hurricane Gloria because he says she leaves a trail of devastation in her wake. I asked him what this meant. Did it mean she was clumsy like I am? He said it wasn't so much things that she upset, which wouldn't be so bad, more people and emotions. Does that mean she's evil, I asked. Dad said she didn't do it on purpose, so no, she wasn't evil. She was just a handful. I asked him what being a handful meant, and he said it meant being larger than life. When I tried to ask him what being larger than life meant, he put his hand on my shoulder. Not now, Ted, he said. The morning Aunt Gloria's letter came was the same as any other. I heard the post drop as usual on the doormat. I was on shreddy number three. And the radio forecast was saying it was set fair and but with a risk of showers in the southeast. Cat was eating toast standing up, wriggling. It wasn't that she had fleas, although that's what it looked like. She was listening to her weirdo music on headphones, which meant she wouldn't hear the weather and wouldn't wear a raincoat or bring her umbrella to school, which meant that she would get wet and I wouldn't, and this was good. Dad was hopping around in one sock, complaining about how the washing machine had eaten all his socks and he was late. Mom was looking through the laundry bag for a spare. Ted, get the post. Mum said. She was in her nurse's uniform, and even I know when her words come out short and sharp like that, you do what she asks, even though I hate leaving my shreddies turned to mush. I came back with six envelopes. Kat saw me and snatched them off me and picked out a big brown envelope and a small white one. I could see her school emblem on the white one. It is like a squashed up X and over it a bishop's hat, which is called a meter. Kat tried to hide it behind the big brown envelope, but Mum saw her. Not so fast, Katrina, Mum said. When Mum calls Kat Katrina, you know that trouble is coming. Kat's lips pressed up tight. She handed over the post, all items except the brown envelope, which she held up for all to see that it was addressed to her, Katrina Spark. She opened it and a catalogue came out. It was called Hair Flare. She walked over to the door, head nodding. You're going to read from I A Shreddy's number seven down to the bottom of the page. OK, pause the video here and just practice reading aloud for the final time this week. OK, good work. Let's move on with our final two pages. What? This letter from your school. What letter from my school? This letter, the one you tried to hide. What about it? It says you were missing last week without a sick note, last Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Well? Well, what? Where are you? She was AWOL, Mom, I suggested. Cat and Mom stared at me. AWOL, like in the army, I explained. Absent without leave. Get stuffed, you creep, Cat hissed. She went out and slammed the door after her. The radio program switched back to the news. Turn that thing off, Ted, Mom said. I fiddled with the knob, but she pulled the plug out of the socket instead. Okay, that shows she's really angry. She didn't even wait or have the patience for Ted to turn it off himself. There was silence. I heard Dad munching some toast. She's going off the rails, Ben, Mom said to Dad. Off the rails, I repeated, thinking of train accidents. I suppose Mom was saying something about Katrina being AWOL. Maybe off the rails was another way of saying skiving, which means not going to school when you should. But I didn't dare check, not with Mom in that mood. Off the rails and nobody cares, she said. I used to bunk off at her age, Dad said. I'd spend the day rise, riding buses and smoking fags in the park. My 20th shreddy nearly went down the wrong way. The thought of Dad with a cigarette in hand was very strange. He never smokes now. Dad tapped Mom's shoulder, and when she looked up at him, he kissed her in the middle of her forehead. He gave off a funny squeak that nearly put me off the rest of my shreddies. Let's discuss it tonight, Faith. I've got to run. There's a meeting with blowing up the barracks. Mom's lips went up a bit. OK, love, later. I should explain here that Dad is not a terrorist who goes around blowing up the places where soldiers live. He is a demolition expert. OK, so I gathered evidence that you won't be able to see it, but I will be referring to it in my video and thinking about what evidence to use when I come to my answer. So just let me get up my book where I've already written the date. 
and I've written the sorry, I've written the date and I've written the big question. And now we're going to go into it in some detail. OK, so I have my evidence and I'm going to go on the side of that. It was not the right decision because I don't think they should have let someone who was new to London go up the London Eye and I don't think they should have taken a ticket from a stranger. So they're my points and I'm going to back them up with evidence throughout. So off we go. In my opinion, again, as I always do, for my opening statement, I will use the question to help me. Ted and Kat did not make the right decision to let Salim ride the eye alone. You could say board the eye alone. They should have let him manage it all in the first place. Ride the eye alone. So, just need to fix my writing. Okay, so there is my opening sentence using the question as a way to open my um, points. Okay, my first point is going to be that they shouldn't have taken a ticket from the stranger. So I'm just going to use an opener like firstly. They took a ticket from a stranger which is something you should never do. Okay, you're all taught not to take things from strangers or talk to strangers, which is something you should never do. Quote, so I've made my point. Remember P-E-E, -E. next comes the quote. Point, evidence. Here comes my quote. A stranger came up to us in the queue. Offering us a free ticket. We took it. and gave it to Salim. Close my quotes. OK, I've made a point. I've given evidence. Can you remind me what my final step to success is in terms of making my first point? Thank you. Yes, I must give an explanation. So I'm going to use the line. This shows that. This shows that what they did wasn't wise or wasn't a good idea. And they certainly should not have let him go alone. And just make sure I refer back to my point especially after taking a ticket from a stranger. OK, there's my point, evidence and explanation. Now let me get my ruler and my pink marker so we can have a look at how I did in my first point. So, point, they took a ticket from a stranger. Bad idea. Not like that idea. P. Here's my quote to back it up. Here's my evidence. And then I gave an explanation saying it wasn't wise. Not I'm letting go. Taking a ticket from a stranger. P. E. And an explanation. Okay, I've only done one point. 
I need to now make a second one. So my second point, I'm going to talk about that fact that Salim was never on the eye before, so he wasn't familiar with his surroundings. So that is going to be my next point. OK. So secondly, skip two lines, new paragraph. Salim was never on the eye before. I give I a capital E because it is a place. The London Eye is a place. And he was a visitor. To London. So would not have known his surroundings. Okay, there's my point that he's a visitor. He does not know where he's going. It's his first time on the eye. I now <clears throat> need to give evidence to support that point. Quote, they sealed him into a capsule. Sorry, just referring to my text. With 20 other people who he didn't know. Okay, there's my evidence to support my point. Now I just need to explain it. This shows that it was a mistake. So that Salim go alone as he was not aware of his surroundings. He does not know London, nor the people in the capsule. So let's quickly click back. I did point Evans and explain my first uh, reason. Then I gave a second one. Salim was never on the eye before. I gave my evidence, quoted from the text, and then I explained what I meant by using this shows that, that it suggests that, and he was not aware of his surroundings. So there's my two points answering the question about whether Ted and Cat did the right thing to let him ride alone. You need to go and find your own evidence now. Write a similar answer, not copying mine, but using it as a structure to help you with PEE -E times two. And I look forward to reading them all on CISO this afternoon. So have a lovely Thursday and I will talk to you in the morning. Bye.